In this video, I'm going to talk about how solutions to the Schrodinger equation depend on time. This video is part of a playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link to this playlist in the description below. In the previous video of this playlist, I actually used the method of separation of variables to split the Schrodinger equation, which is a partial differential equation, into two ordinary differential equations. And one of those ordinary differential equations depended on time. And that's the one we're going to be looking at in this video. So I'll go ahead and write that down, and we'll see uh, how we can actually solve that. So what we had was i h bar 1 over phi times d phi dt. And that was all equal to a constant e. So if you remember from the previous video, this was on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we had an equation that depended exclusively on x. So it was just a function of x, but this guy was just a function of t. And because you had something that was just a function of t and something that was just a function of x, and they had to be equal to each other for all values of t and all values of x, we knew that they had to be constants. So both sides of the equation had to be a constant. And that constant we chose to call e because we're going to find out later this e is actually the energy of the particle. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve this equation. We can actually rearrange this equation slightly and, and make it more readable. And hopefully, it's going to make it more familiar uh, to other ODEs you might have solved in the past. So if we write the time derivative just on the left-hand side, so d phi dt uh, is equal to, we can move this constant of i h bar onto the other side. If we divide by i, it's the same as multiplying by minus i. So what that's going to give us is minus i e. And don't forget that h bar. We have to divide by h bar. And we'll also move this phi to the other side as well. So have a look at this. This might be something you have seen before. You have the time derivative of a function is equal to the function itself multiplied by a constant. What kind of uh, function has that property? Well, it turns out it's actually the exponential function. The exponential function uh, has this property that if you take its time derivative, it's proportional to itself with a constant factor out the front. If you take e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is just itself. But we don't have e to the x. We have e to the some kind of constant times uh, our variable. And in this case, we're not dealing with x. We're dealing with t. So how can we solve this? First of all, we can uh, move this guy back to the left-hand side. We can move dt to the right-hand side. And then we can integrate both sides. So what's that going to give us? We're going to have d phi over phi is equal to minus i e over h bar times dt. Right? So I'm just rewriting it. I'm moving these little infinitesimals around. Now, this might not be extremely rigorous. But what we're actually doing is moving these infinitesimal chunks around from one side to the other. So what does that actually mean? It means a tiny little nudge in phi divided by phi is proportional to a tiny little nudge in t. So that's what these infinitesimals are actually telling us. That's what dt and d phi actually mean. So now what we need to do is we need to integrate both sides. If we integrate both sides, on this side, we're integrating with respect to phi. On this side, we're integrating with respect to dt. So what we're actually doing is we're adding up these infinitesimals. That's what an integral is. You're adding up uh, infinitely many little infinitesimals. So this left-hand side is going to turn into a natural log. So we're going to have the natural log, or ln, of phi. And we need to make sure this is the absolute value, because this guy can only take in uh, positive inputs. What about the right-hand side? Well, the right-hand side is just the integral of a constant. So that's just going to be a linear function. Uh, and that's going to be minus i e of h bar. And we're going to have a t, right? because this is a linear guy that is the integral of a constant. So when the integrand is a constant, we just get a linear function over here. And we also have to introduce a constant of integration. So I'll call that plus c. Uh, and this guy is going to make sure uh, that we're not, we're not dealing with any specific function, but we're going to take care of that constant of integration, because these guys are not definite integrals. They're indefinite integrals. So 
how can we rearrange this? Well, let's exponentiate both sides of the equation. If we exponentiate both sides of the equation, then this natural log is actually going to disappear. So what we're going to be left with is e to the power of ln of phi is equal to e to the power of minus i. This is a capital E over here. That's the energy, whereas this is Euler's number. And then we're going to have h bar down here. And we're going to have a t. And then we're going to have plus c. Now, as I said before, this guy and this guy are going to cancel each other out. So we're just going to be left with phi is equal to e to the power of. And what we can actually do is we can, using the laws for exp exponents, we can separate these guys out. We're going to have e to the c times e to the minus i capital E over h bar t. And if you, if you take some number c and you exponentiate it, you're just going to get another constant. So we can just repackage this guy as another constant. Furthermore, what we can actually do is we can absorb that constant into the other function. Because remember, we're, we're using the method of separation of variables. So we have a solution that is of the form uh, capital Psi is equal to little Psi times Phi. So we can just move that constant of integration uh, that we got over here, we can just move that into the other guy because this is a product. So we can get rid of this constant uh, or we can just set it equal to 1 because there's going to be some kind of normalization constant occurring in psi. So we don't actually have to worry about the constant. So the takeaway message is that phi as a function of time is equal to e to the minus i capital E over h bar times t. This over here is the time dependence of each separable solution to the Schrodinger equation. So what we have is an exponent with a negative imaginary uh, factor upstairs in the exponent. And this is how time dependence gets factored in. So all of these guys just depend on position. All of these psi's just depend on position. But these guys just depend on time. So what we're going to do in the next video is find out a way to get these psi's, these lowercase psi's. And then we're going to stitch them together with these phi's. So now we know the time dependence. This is how uh, each of uh, the, the solutions that are separable to the Schrodinger equation, they vary with time. This is how they actually change with respect to time. That is the takeaway message of this video. Make sure you watch the next video in this playlist. You can find all of the videos in this quantum mechanics playlist by clicking over here.